Republican side right now is in reaction to how President Obama is dealing with this most recent terror attack no. in Brussels. And some would say the lack of reaction by yeah. President Obama. He continued his trip to Cuba. He went to the baseball game in Cuba. Uh, he's now continuing his trip to Argentina. And I have to show you some pictures of just a short time ago of uh, President Obama in Argentina dancing, uh, doing the tango. Hopefully we have that video there. There's the president. Um, that's the president doing the tango. The president of the United States doing the tango. <laughs> David Gergen, not badly, I should say. <laughs> D David Gergen, though, a a as far as an image goes in the midst of terror fears after Brussels, is this the image the White House wants to send? Well, to be fair, the president has a belief that restraint is the best thing he can do. He does not want to seem like he's rushed into anything, he, you know, that somehow he gets all, all shaken up. And so he wants to hold back, he continually hold back. I happen to disagree with that, especially in the, in the, I think people now, after all these attacks, we've had an attack a day around the world for the last 12 days, but after San Bernardino and Paris and Brussels and Ankara and, you know, you, and Istanbul, People are looking for more forceful action to to actually drive back ISIS, and right now we're not winning against ISIS. We have reduced the amount of territory they have in Syria and Iraq, but they've expanded elsewhere. And we now learn through the Associated Press they've trained, trained up 400 fighters to go through Europe. Under those circumstances, I must tell you, I would tell the president, when you open your speech in Cuba to the Cuban people, in the 38-minute speech, you only get 50 seconds to Brussels. You really underplayed. You have you sort of brushed it off. When you go to a baseball game, it looks a little frivolous. When you're dancing like that, I, I even think that hard call, he should have thought about coming back and, and gathering. People are looking for leadership here. I think that's a critical issue for him. Restraint does not equal leadership when you're under attack like this. We haven't confirmed the exact detail, by the way, of 100, you know, 400 fighters going to Europe right now. But the idea that ISIS is sending fighters to Europe is something we have reported. Jeffrey, go ahead. Uh, uh, by chance, just the other day, right before the Brussels attack, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair gave an interview to the BBC, and he was talking about this, this very issue, and he said that when people are, are forced to choose between what they see as uh, 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 liberalism that was flexible and not, not assertive versus a hardline uh, position, that they inevitably, when faced with terror, will go straight to the hardliner. I really do think that's what you're seeing here. I mean, he said this before all of this transpired, but I think he was he was right about it. And I have to give you the last word right now. In, you know, in 15 seconds or less, the president dancing the tango. Your thoughts? I think the entire thing is horrible. It reminded me of when he went golfing right after James Foley's head was cut off. Look, I think it is inexcusable that when the entire world is standing in solidarity with Brussels, is in shock, is in grief. The president of the United States is in Cuba, sitting next to a dictator who's been in power for 56 years, who has ordered the shoot down of American citizens, who has been anti-American for 56 years, eating peanuts and going to a baseball game like if he was Walt Disney. It's not Walt Disney, and it is a day of grief for the entire world. I think President Obama knows full well that optics matter, but he chose his legacy over optics and i think it was a shameful shameful disappointing moment for president obama i was disappointed i was not surprised all right anna navarro david gergen jeff